Module 8. Hi, this is Joe Cerrone and I'm going to talk to you today about the AutoCAD Online course. We'll be covering Module 8 and so I'll select that from the side menu here. Printing and Plotting in AutoCAD 2012. AutoCAD provides you with a couple of different environments um, and what it's done is it's created a separation between what's called model space and paper space. And what that does is it allows you to create these detailed models in three-dimensional or two-dimensional work. And then when it comes time to outputting them on paper, we use this layout mode or what's called paper space to be able to get things on the paper at scale. And so we have this new environment that we're going to be talking about called paper space and model space. To demonstrate how that works, we're going to come over here to the sidebar and I've got this assignment called Create and Manipulate Viewports and it's a PDF and if you click on that it will open and this exercise will cover how we create these viewports and how we manipulate them and how we set scales. And so it's an architectural drawing and you can kind of see what this completed exercise is going to look like. It's got an overall floor plan and then it's got a detail of this bay window and a detail of this staircase. And what we're going to do to get started with this is we are going to open this drawing called Create and Manipulate Viewports. And then we're going to go through and do some exercises with that. And so I've already saved this to the desktop. And I'm going to toggle back to my web page. And I'm going to click on this tab or this hyperlink here. And I'm going to open the drawing. Okay, so here it is. Here's my drawing, and let's take a look at how we have our CAD set up. Uh, first off, um, we're going to take a look at the environment here, and if we take a look at the way it's set up, I've got the tabs here, and I'm going to invoke the show menu bar command, which will give me a little bit more control over my user interface. Then down here at the bottom for my settings, once again I have the use icons unchecked. And by having them unchecked, I can then see these words rather than the glyphs. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this over and I'm going to open that PDF so that we can look at the instructions for this exercise. And so the instructions in this exercise will have us open this drawing which we have done. And then in the Layout tab, we're going to select the green rectangular viewport. Okay, and so as we look at it, we have these different Layout tabs. And let's take a, a minute or two to kind of explain what we're looking at. All right, so here is our AutoCAD drawing. We've just opened it up. And the Layout tab is active, meaning this is what's called paper space. We'll get this right triangle icon, and what we have is a piece of paper, and this piece of paper is shown right here. If I push the wheel on the mouse, I can pan over. If I turn the wheel on the mouse, I can increase the magnification level. And I can do things like take a look at my title block. If I need to edit it and add information, I can do that, which we will do at a later time. I can look at my model. And I can also switch back and forth between what's called model space. And so if I click on the tab that says model, I'm now working on the model, which is an infinite drawing board, or layout. And the layout allows me to set up what it's going to look like on paper. And I have a couple of pages here. I have layout 1 and layout 2. And so what we're able to do is to create this drawing. And then we're able to create somewhat of a book where we can create these individual pages and on these individual pages we can select what we want to display and how we want that displayed. So we clicked on layout tab 1 and what we're going to do is we're going to set the viewport scale. Okay, so what is a viewport? Well, this green square here represents a viewport. And what that is, is it's a window into model space. And so if I double click in this viewport what you'll notice is that it highlights and it turns a heavy green color. You'll also notice if I double click outside this viewport, it gets um, it, it does not highlight or it unhighlights. 
you'll notice also that there is another way to get back and forth and that's this paper model toggle and so I can toggle into what's called floating model space and toggle back to layout mode or what's also known as paper space and so there's a couple of ways to do the same thing what we want to be able to do once we're in a viewport I'll double click inside here is to set up the scale and according to my exercise here what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that scale at 1 30th and so we'll come over here and we will click on this component and set the drawing scale at 1 30th of an inch and what you'll notice is that the drawing scales down to fit in that viewport and I can see a little bit more in here. I can see the dimensions now for that drawing. So we've completed that task. Let's take a look at what else we have to do. The floor plan should now appear smaller in the layout and should be able to see all the dimensions as shown. Click the layout tab number two. We'll select layout tab number two. And what we have now is we have a, oops, excuse me, we have a separate layout page and so what a lot of your architects will do is they'll have the detail of the home or the floor plan and they'll add individual layout tabs for additional details so it's not unusual to see a floor plan first floor second floor you may have another tab that's going to say millwork you may have a furniture plan and so it will all select different components from within model space that they want to display on individual sheets. So what we'll talk about here is how viewports work. So here again we have two viewports now. We have this green viewport on the left and this smaller viewport on the right. The viewport on the left is the overall floor plan and the viewport on the right is a detail of the circular staircase. We can move viewports and treat them like objects while we're in paper space. And so what the instructions have me do is to move this viewport to the upper right hand corner of the title block. So I'll select the move command. I'll select the viewport. I'll hit enter to end my selection. And I'll move it from the corner here of the viewport to the corner of my title block. And so viewports are movable. They're treated as objects while we're in paper space. Step number seven, to activate model space in the layout, position the cursor inside the green rectangular viewport on the left side of the sheet and double click. And so we'll come over here, we'll double click and we'll see that that is highlighted. We'll also see a UCS icon located there. That's our user coordinate system. That lets us know that we are in floating model space. What we're going to do now is we're going to be able to filter layers within the viewport. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to open the Layer Properties Manager, which is located right here. The Layer Properties Manager has all the different layers within the drawing and a number of different settings. And what I've done is I've, I've opened up all of these different areas so that we can see them. If you can't see some of the words, what you can do is you can move the cursor over to a spot between the two different words and double click and that will open that up. So they have quite a bit of details now in the layers. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a layer called internal wall. And so here's my internal wall layer. And what we're going to do is in that internal wall layer is we're going to freeze it within the current viewport. So this viewport is active. That means we're working on it. And then what we can do is we can go into this viewport freeze layer and if we click on this what we will notice, and I'll do this a couple of times so you can see it, is that the interior walls are now no longer visible. I unenable that, the interior walls are now visible, and when I go and click on this viewport freeze button, they're now not visible. And so what the viewports allow you to do is filter what's visible from model space within individual viewports. And you will see that quite a bit on your architectural drawings these days. We can also change the color of layers in the viewports. And so we can take a look at the Layer Properties Manager and we can go through and change the color of the furniture. And so 
um, if we look at our furniture layer here, it's this brown color. But we also have the ability to change the colors of the layers in an individual viewport. If I click on this button right here, which is viewport color, I can change that to this purple color, magenta, and I can OK that. And what you'll see is that all of the furniture within that viewport has now changed to this magenta color. Now that's just within that viewport. What you'll notice is if I click on model space, it's still the same color. Okay, it's still this brown color and all my walls are there. And so it's a filtering tool. We create these complicated models in model space and then we control the visibility of different items within these viewports. We set the scale within these viewports and we select what is visible within those viewports. So we've just gone through and demonstrated how we're able to change the color of different layers within a viewport. And now we'll take a look at some of the other things that we can do with it. We'll go and activate the um, layout too. And what we'll do is in step number 12 here, we will create a viewport. And what they do is they say, type in minus viewports command. There's a couple of ways to do that, okay? If I type in, the, what it wants me to do first is double click in the gray area. And so what it's saying is click outside of the viewport and what we're doing is we're toggling to paper space. Again, model space, it switches the word model, double click outside, paper space. And then if I type in dash VPORTS, it's gonna go into the viewports command here. A better way to do it, I'm going to hit escape out of it, is to go into my view tab and to select my viewport. And so it does give me the ability to create different types of viewports. I'll select rectangular and then what I'll do is I'll create a viewport. And so I'll come over here, I'll click once and then I'll come over here and I'll click again. Next thing I'll do is to set the viewport scale. And so what I'll do is I'll double click in this viewport to activate it. And then what I'll do is I will set the scale at 1 30th. Now you might say, well, there's nothing in there. How can I see anything? Common practice is to do a view zoom all. And so what I'll do is I'll say view, I'll say zoom, and I'll say all, and then it'll show me everything within that drawing. Now it wants us to go and set this viewport scale to 1 30th, which means we're going to highlight just one specific area of it. And so I'll come over here to my viewport scale and I'll say 1 30th and then I'll pan my screen to highlight the area that we talk about here in the exercise and so in step number 14 what I'm going to do is pan the viewport so that we are seeing these bay walls double click in the gray area outside the paper that switches me to floating it switches me to layout mode and what we'll do is then be able to whoops What that allows me to do then is to be able to work with my viewport. And so I can manipulate these viewports with grips. And so if I want to, I can go and highlight that viewport and change the size of it with a grip. And it also allows me to set it up so that my viewport layer is not printing. And so let's just take a look at those couple other aspects. Okay, if I click on a viewport, okay, I can manipulate the size of it. I'm going to turn off this quick properties. It's not necessary. But it allows me to set what I want to be visible within that viewport. The other thing that I can do is I can set up my layer properties so that I do not print the viewports layer. And so if I come over here to my viewports and I say don't print the viewports layer what that'll do is when it comes time to plot this, I say file plot, or I just click on this printer icon. And if I say preview it, you'll notice that the viewports are not visible, those green lines. And so common practice is to put viewports on a viewport layer and then disable that plotting or just turn the layer off. Okay, the other thing that we're gonna look at is how to rotate this viewport. Now this VP rotate associativity set at one is already set for me. So if I type in VP 
R-O-T-A-T-E-A-S-S-O-C, what I'll see is it's set to 1. And 1 being on is a binary value. 1 on, 0 off, and it's binary for on and off. If I rotate the viewport with this VP rotate associativity set to 1, it'll rotate the geometry within the viewport. And so I can come over here and I can I can select it. I can turn it 90 degrees and then I can move it and my viewport information is then allowed to rotate. All right. So that's this exercise. What we'll do is we will um, I will have you go ahead and, and call this we'll double click on the title and we'll say name it with your initials JC dash module 8 and we'll save that to our hard drive and submit that to the D2L, D2L system that completes module 8